Billy Bunter's Postal Order by Frank Richards Performed by Martin Jarvis Mr Quelch frowned. His frown was directed towards the fattest member of his form. Every fellow in the Greyfriars remove, excepting Billy Bunter, noted that frown on the form master's severe brow and sat up and took notice accordingly. Quelch's frown in that form room had almost the effect of Jove's nod on Olympus. If it did not exactly shake the heavens, at least it warned all concerned that the thunder was about to roll. In which circumstances, nobody in the remove form wanted to draw Quelch's attention to himself. Harry Wharton, who had a football list under his desk, dismissed it from mind. Bob Cherry, who had been thinking of projecting an ink ball at Lord Molevera, abandoned the idea. Frank Nugent, who'd been whispering to Johnny Bull and Hurry Jamset Ram Singh, became as dumb as an oyster. Only Billy Bunter remained regardless. Bunter, apparently, couldn't care less. That was not because Billy Bunter was a fellow of tremendous nerve, reckless of his form master's frown. It was because Bunter didn't see the signs of gathering wrath. There were two reasons for that. The first was that the owl of the remove couldn't see very far anyway, even with the aid of his big spectacles. The second was that Bunter's attention was fixed not on Quelch or on the lesson, but on the form room clock. Every four or five minutes at least, Bunter's eyes and spectacles swivelled round to the clock. For some reason, known only to himself, Billy Bunter was unusually and particularly anxious that morning for break to arrive. Now, once more, those eyes and spectacles were concentrated on the clock, while the thunder grew and intensified in Quelch's brow. And then, as if to add the finishing touch to Quelch's wrath, Bunter, still happily unconscious of the signs of stormy weather, whispered to Skinner, I say, Skinner, what's the time? Skinner made no reply. He, if not Bunter, was aware of the frown and the glint in the gimlet eye. I can't quite make out the beastly thing from here, whispered Bunter. I say, is it twenty-two? Skinner was still dumb. Mark Linley was on con. He went on construing the Latin exercise, but Quelch's attention was no longer fixed on the best scholar in his form, whose translation always gave him satisfaction. It had wandered to Bunter and stayed there. I say, Stott, is it nearly a quarter to? whispered Bunter. Stott, like Skinner, seemed both deaf and dumb. Peter Todd, though well aware of Quelch's gorgon-like stare, ventured upon a warning whisper. Shut up, you fat ass! Oh, really, Toddy? I say, what's the time? Mr Quelch breathed hard, and he breathed deep. Not only was Bunter giving no attention whatever to the lesson, but he was actually whispering in class, right under the glare of the gimlet eyes. That will do, Lindley, said Mr Quelch. Mark sat down. Bunter? Oh, uh, 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 yes, sir? Bunter, thus reminded of the irritating existence of his form master, turned his spectacles on Mr Quelch and became aware of a thunderous frown. Oh, uh, I, I, I wasn't talking, sir. During this lesson, said Mr Quelch, you have given no attention whatever, Bunter. Oh, yes, sir. I, I... You have been continually looking at the clock, Bunter. Oh, no, sir. I, I only looked to see whether it had stopped. The clock has not stopped, Bunter. It is exactly twenty minutes to eleven, said Mr Quelch. Oh, thank you, sir. Bunter's face brightened. Only five minutes more of Quelch's tosh, and then... You appear very anxious about the time, Bunter. Yes, sir. I, I, I mean, no, sir. No, I, I was only wondering whether there was a letter for me in the rack, sir. I, 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 I'm expecting a postal order, sir, stammered Bunter. Oh, my hat, murmured Bob Cherry. There was a general grin and even a sound of chuckling in the remove. Every fellow in the remove, if not every fellow at Greyfriars School, had heard of the postal order Bunter expected. Bunter lived in a perpetual state of expecting a postal order, which seldom or never materialised. Apparently, on this particular morning, Bunter had some particular reason for supposing that long-felt expectation was to be realised at last. Mr Quelch gave his form a glance, which checked every sign of merriment on the spot. Every face became serious at once. Bunter, 
Quelch seemed rather to bite off the name than utter it. Such matters should be entirely dismissed from mind during class. Oh, really? I mean, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Certainly. You will now construe, Banter, said Mr. Quelch in a voice like a grinding of a saw. And if your construe is not satisfactory, Banter, you will remain in the form room during break and write out the lesson. Oh, crikey! gasped Bunter. Do you hear me, Bunter? Construe, rapped Mr. Quelch. Oh, yes, sir. Um, yeah, I- I've just missed the place, sir. You will go on from Fragrantia Mela. Oh, uh, yes, thank you, sir. Billy Bunter blinked at his book and found that Fragrantia Mela was followed by a speech of the pious Aeneas. O Fortunati Quorum Yam Moenia Surgunt.' 